Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm gonna take a close look on the King Kong Fly Egg 100mm brushless micro quadcopter. First of all I would like to say thank you to Banggood for sending this product for a review. The one I've got is the plug and play version, there is no RX, but you can also get it with a Futaba compatible, FRSky, FlySky, and also DSM-2 versions. And there's also a bigger brother, which is the 130 millimeters flag as well. It comes in this useful lunch box. And first thing we notice is the quadcopter. And there is a big resemblance to the Gepper Sea Leopard, which I've built and reviewed. And I must tell you, the design is very nice. We're gonna take a close look on the quadcopter in a minute. In addition, we got this 2.3 inch propeller guards with the screws that are needed, a 2S, 350 milliampere hour LiPo battery, motor guards, two sets of propellers and M2 screws, a micro USB cable, a rubber band and a propeller extractor, and the instruction manual. It doesn't come with any charger, so you're gonna have to provide your own one. On the front of the quadcopter, we can see the camera. This is an 800 TV line CMOS camera, and it is connected to a transmitter, which has a selectable output strength of 25 and 100 milliwatt. On the back, we have two LED indicators and the antenna of the VTX. The motors are 1103 7800 kV motors. And in the center, we can find a Pico BLX flight controller along with a four in one 10 ampere ESC controller which supports the Shot 600. On the bottom we can see this pad for the battery and it's secured with the rubber band which I think is a great idea and it's better than the Velcros that usually included with these micro quadcopters and because this is the plug and play version we can find these wires over here that are connected to the S-Bus port on the flight controller. The weight of the flag without the battery is 63.6 grams and if we add in the 350 milliampere hour battery it's 84.3 grams and you have to add also the propellers and the receiver so it's going to be about 88 grams. The design itself looks very durable. The thickness of the bottom plate is 2.5 millimeters. The distance between the motors as expected is 100 millimeters and the length of this quadcopter is about 85 millimeters. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to connect on the bottom the XM Plus receiver and then configure it on Betaflight. So I've just connected the receiver and next thing I'm going to do, first we're going to go over the configuration of the VTX, then I'm going to configure it on Betaflight and take it for a test flight. Setting the VTX is done using the button over here and it's not as convenient as having the LED display because you will have to figure this combination of colors in order to get the correct channel. You actually you have in total only 16 channels in this VTX. I'm going to use 5860 so I will have to match the white and blue LEDs and then it's going to work. And setting changing between 25 to 100 milliwatt is done by soldering two pads on the bottom of this VTX and I've already checked and it's already soldered so it's going to transmit on 100 milliwatt. So let's power it on. And you can see there are colors here that are blinking and in order to change it you will have to press it. Now it's blue and white and I will have to match again white and blue. So let's cycle through all the available channels. And now it's on white and blue, meaning now it's on 5860. The angle of the camera can be adjusted. In order to do so, you will have to loosen all the screws over here and you will have also to take off the LED indicator on the back because what you need to do, you have to open it up and then you just have to shift it. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is for now for the test flight. And I've noticed that there is a little bit of a wobbling in the camera and it's not well secured. So I'm going to secure it using a rubber band. So I'm going to remove the screws from over here and just use this rubber band. Now after I put this rubber band, it's better secured. And another option that you have is just to put some hot glue on the base and then it's going to secure it better as well. Now unfortunately this quadcopter doesn't feature any OSD, but we do have a buzzer in the front of the quadcopter and this is actually a very good place to put a buzzer because it's well secured and probably it's not going to get muffled because it's not going to get easily blocked on the bottom. So you're going to hear it if you're going to lose it on the field. This quadcopter is capable of flying three cells because 10 ampere is more than enough. 
I'm going to fly it with two batteries. One is the 2S 350mAh that it came with. And I'm also going to try this 550mAh 70C batteries, which I've just got. And hopefully it's not going to be too heavy for it. So what I'm going to do next in the video, I'm going to connect it to Bidia Flight, finish all the configuration and go through all the settings and then take it for a test flight. And in the end of the video, I'll tell you what I think about this quadcopter. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. So overall flying the fly egg was really nice and it, it felt really steady in the air, uh, didn't get a lot of prop wash, though I've read there is no much of a punch to it, I think it performed quite well. I highly recommend you to mount the camera because I think it really helped and maybe it's a good idea also to change the propellers to one of these propellers, especially if you plan to fly this quadcopter with a 3 cells battery you can get about five minutes maybe a little bit more using this battery and I think it wasn't too heavy for the quadcopter so it's a good idea to get a couple of spare batteries and this one will give you a longer flight time. The only disadvantage that this quadcopter has in my opinion is the lack of OSD because you can't monitor the voltage while you're flying it so I think that if you have the plug and play version you should get a receiver with uh, telemetry so then you can monitor the voltage for the telemetry you can also monitor the RSSI it will help you to find it in case it's lost because this buzzer is not loud enough so thank you for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions about this quadcopter feel free to ask it in the comment section below and I'll see you on my next videos goodbye